You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to rollermartinunfiltered.com, you can make this possible. But I got to talk, talk about this story out of Alaska where uh, a, a young swimmer, a sister, biracial, was disqualified after a race because the judge ruled that he could see her butt cheeks. Okay? Now, after lots of public outcry, the decision was reversed. Now, Brecklin Willis, she's a member of the swim team uh, at Diamond High School in Anchorage, Alaska. She has competed in four events at a swim competition on Friday. She won. Uh, she swam in four of them, won a heat during the meet. But a race official said that her swimsuit has shifted into a position that showed too much of her backside, claiming that was a rule against that. Folks, it was a team, a school-issued swimsuit. Many people say that she's a curvaceous person, but she's also a sister, meaning she got butt. She's show. Erica, this is absolutely insane. In fact, there was a female judge who actually said, we're going to have a problem with this once this gets out. This guy tried to claim that the rule existed, and they said, no, it doesn't. This is nonsense, this rule. This is crazy. <laughs> So cue Serena Williams and then just mm. cue also the policing of black bodies. <laughs> this is not just black women. To be black is to live in a police state constantly. Mm. It does not matter where you live, where you, um, what type of um, occupation that you have. That is really the existence of being black. And so when we hear stories like this that have actually made national news, I know for myself, and people um, that I communicate with, this is not something that surprises us because we've actually experienced the same things um, growing up in school um, and whatnot and in our own profession. So I think that this is kind of a part of that larger conversation where um, we're just talking about, like, on the debate stage, which is a perfect place on the HBCU campus, that, that these are some of the conversations that need to be had from a constituent or just, you know, folks in the public to people who are actually running from higher office to talk about um, what are their, uh, where do they stand on um, making sure policies that really do continue to keep us in a place where everything we do from our hair, our wear locks, to the, our bodies, this is, this to the is... way that we communicate is always, always something that's being policed. Utterly idiotic, Greg. It's utterly idiotic. <laughs> it is, but I mean, I agree with uh, with Sister Wilson. I agree with Erica. I mean, at the end of the day, this is the this is, the rule does exist. It exists in the warped fantasies of white men and the white racial imaginary. As she said, remember that cat suit Serena had on almost 20 years ago now at the U.S. Open, and, rem and remember what they tried to do her at the French Open, saying she couldn't win, so she just put on a tutu and revolutionized the tennis world in a tutu. <laughs> My right. point is that they, there will never not be a fascination, number one, with the body. She's right. right. It's not just black people. Right. Look at the ESPN annual body issue. Uh -huh. This fascination with the body. Uh -huh. But when it comes to black people, black men like LeBron James with his arm around the waist of a model on the cover of Vanity Fair, like in a replica of the King Kong mm -hmm. 1933 mm -hmm. version, or mm -hmm. for that matter, coming forward to 2019, this example. Mm -hmm. What we are dealing with Got is it. this fetishization of the body, and black women have had to suffer the brunt of it, brother. Mm -hmm. Whether it's their body or their hair. Scott? I mean, this is right. this is swimming while black. And you got wrestling while black. Remember the, the cat that they cut his dreads off? Yes. They said he couldn't compete. And they know that people of color, we love competing. We are athletic. Uh, they love to say we're scientifically engineered differently, which is complete falsity. Uh, but, but, but white privilege and white racism, they continue to be obsessed with us and our ability to achieve athletically and intellectually despite their efforts to suppress us. Right. Our candidates win despite voter suppression and oppression. And they continue, yep. white America continues to be obsessed with this, yep. and we keep winning, which is why when we all grew up, we say, you gotta be twice as good in order to survive, let alone succeed. Our parents were right. We do, because white privilege and white racism continues to be obsessed with us and trying to see how much more yep. we can overcome, yep. and we keep winning. And good luck to that swimmer, and glad she got that resolve, and she needs to keep swimming, because they're telling her she probably got to lose weight to be a championship yep. swimmer, because she too curvaceous. curvaceous. Keep your curves, young lady. Keep your curves. <laughs>
Well, first of all, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right, right. They ain't going nowhere, right. and they might as well suck it up. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth, the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. Of course, marijuana, marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill recently passed in Congress, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants. Folks, this is simple. It's an incredible investment opportunity. And that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. Now, what they've done for the folks at Roller Martin Unfiltered is allow for you to make a minimum investment of 200 bucks. The initial investment was $500. You can invest this, this in the crowdfunding campaign. That's right, 200 bucks up to $10,000. Now, again, all you got to do is go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org to get in the game and get in the game now. Now, back to your Roller Martin Unfiltered video.